On the Build Show today, we're talking about my garage door. That's right, I get a super quiet garage door. It's black, it's super insulated, it's got double pane glass, I got specialty hinges, I got all kinds of cool stuff. Let's get going! All right, guys, we're at my house under construction and we just installed this beautiful overhead door. Now, I've got a bunch of specs that I wanna tell you about. But let's get nerdy on the door itself. First off, this is an overhead door company, 5760 Thermacore steel model. This is considered like a medium price door. This is not a super expensive door, but it's also not the least cost door. What I liked about it and what I was searching for was the door that I could find that had the highest R value. And in fact, this was an R17.5. It's a steel door that has polyurethane insulation on in the center, but it's got steel on the front side and steel on the back side. Now you're gonna notice that this is a flush panel, meaning that there's no uh, kind of fake raised panels on this. And then on the top of the door, I've also got double paned satin etched glass, and those panels run long ways. So I've got light in my garage, but I didn't want people to see in, but I also wanted to maintain that R value. So these aren't quite as high R value as the door. My guess is it'd be the same as any interior window on your house, probably R3. But the fact that it's double pane compared to single pane means I'm gonna have a lot better insulation value out of that glass. Now let's talk openers next. You'll notice when the door opened, there's no opener visible in the center. And in fact, you can see my gorgeous wood ceiling. I had my guys install most of that wood ceiling or at least part of that before the garage door guys came so that I could mount the track system on top of the wood. Now the wood that you're seeing here, this is a specialty product. I got it from uh, Delta Millworks. It's a uh, hemlock, vertical grain hemlock. It comes in a tongue and groove one by six, which is basically what you've got right here. So the guys are actually able to nail through the tongues. And that way when it's all put together, no visible fasteners on the whole ceiling. I was really excited about that. You're also gonna notice that my walls are going to be this right here. This is a uh, pre-finished maple plywood. And then my base on the uh, garage is a PVC base. That's a Versatec five quarter by eight base mold that's, that's laid first. So that if I'm power washing, if I'm scrubbing or the cars are wet, I'm not worried about the bottom of the plywood getting wet. It's just gonna be that PVC that's gonna get wet. I'm excited about that look in the garage. But the next thing you're gonna notice about the opener is that I matched the slope of the ceiling to the garage door opening track. So what I did was I told my dealer, hey, I've got a 312 pitch on this roof and I wanted to match the opener to that. And that's how I was able to get that slope ceiling. So when the door's up, it's kind of tucked up in there and I've got my nice flat ceiling in this portion of the house that has living space above visible and all that wood is visible through there. I was excited about that. Now I was able to achieve that also because I've got a side mount opening. This is a LiftMaster side mount opening uh, garage door. And what's nice about that unit is it's not very expensive. It's you know probably two or th maybe $300 more than a standard opener. But what you get is you're missing all that center hardware. Everything's tucked away in the corner. And I really like that clean install. You also can get a couple of other cool options. This one has the MyQ app on it which allows you to control your garage door opener from your phone and even set some parameters like, hey, if the garage door is open at 10 p.m., it'll automatically close the garage door. And you can even integrate to uh, Amazon's in-home garage delivery system, which I've got on my other house and I've really liked. But the last feature that I wanna mention, which is probably one of the best features, is there's a big battery backup in there, which means that anytime the power's out, I can actually open and close this garage, I think up to 20 times is what they say. Now I've not actually tested 20, but I've certainly done it probably as many as 10 times before, strictly on battery backup and no problem, it opens and closes. It's maybe a little bit slower uh, than when it's plugged into electricity, but you'd never know if you came home and the power was out because the door would actually open for you and that's huge. You're not trapped in a garage. Now check out my other video about these crossbars. This is actually a wind load rated door it meets the fortified home specs uh, for wind load rating for my area. That's something you should definitely think about, but you can add that and you can make just about any door wind load rated. So that's something to think about here. One other addition I made on this garage door at the last minute was I got turned on to this product. It's called the Elide 
Fire is the name of the company, and I think this is called a Fireball. I'm not totally sure, uh, but this basically is a static system. It doesn't require power or pressure or anything. And this ball sits in a, a little metal cage, and you're going to put it above anything that could be a potential fire source in the future. So, in my case, I've got a garage door opener that has a battery backup. Uh, this LiftMaster has a, a battery mounted right there behind the door. So I'm going to mount this right above the door so that if this ever caught fire or the opener ever had a problem, I've got an extinguisher right there and won't catch fire on the rest of my garage. Let me show you what to do. All right, so it's out of the package. You can see the ball is separate from the cage, and we're just going to pop a couple screws on there. Let's look at mounting location, though. I want to be able to pop this out. There is an expiration on this ball, so I want to be able to replace it in the future. I could put it right above, or I could put it on the ceiling right here. The ceiling mount would make a lot of sense because if the fire came either direction, but I think I'm gonna mount it back here. You know, if that, if that battery is right here and caught fire, this would drop right against the wall, and I think that'd be my best bet for fire safety. So I'm gonna mount it right above here where I can get the new ball on. Okay, good thing I got my bit extension on here. Sure is nice when you got real plywood on the ceiling or on the wall here. Plus real wood in the ceiling. There you go. I'm not even sure I need a second screw. It's right in the plywood. And the whopping difficult install is complete. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Alright, and there's the final install. You can see my battery is right there. The motor is right below us, so if anything ever caught fire, this thing would melt and kind of cascade down and put it out. Pretty cool little device, gotta say. Hopefully I'll never need it. Hopefully it'll sit up here for the next 50 or 100 years and never be touched. <laughs> Although I think uh, you might want to double check, but there is an expiration date I saw written on the package. It looks like this one does need to be changed in a few years, 2025. Uh, so you get, you know, five, six years technically before you need to replace it. So that'd be easy to do though with this metal cage, just pop it right out and, uh, pop a new ball in, in five years and you're good to go. Another cool feature of the LiftMaster opening, uh, system is this right here. It's got an auto deadbolt. So when the door actually goes all the way down, this actually throws right into the door. Now you've got a true deadbolt on the door. It's kind of a cool little setup. And then I did a couple beauty things too on this garage door. I put in, uh, I, gosh, I don't know who told me about these, but these are a fairly inexpensive uh, system that I found on Amazon called wire hide. These are like, you know, 15 bucks, something like that, or 10 bucks for the wire hide and maybe 25 or so for the sensor shield. And man, look how nice these look. Here's the wire hide right here. It's, it's basically hiding that cat five cable, that low voltage cable that's sending a signal here to the uh, sensor, which is basically making sure that a kid isn't in the way or a car is not uh, pulled in there. That's just hiding that. And then this is actually protecting that sensor. It's called a sensor shield. And it's just a piece of rigid powder coated metal. You can get it a bunch of different um, colors. I think white and black are an option. But what it's doing is it's hiding that sensor in there. So if you knock this with your golf clubs or your bike getting in or your kids, you know, normally your, your garage door is not going to go down until someone comes back here and jiggles this and gets it uh, lined up with the other sensor. So they're actually pointed at each other. But in this case, man, these are never going to go away. They're, they're in really good shape. They're nice and hard. And you'll also notice, just like the ceiling, I had my finish carpenter put uh, this front wall plywood in before we hung the door. So this track is now through the plywood. The wire hide is through the plywood. And again, that's just some three quarter maple plywood. I just did that as a finished wall so that now I can attach things to my wall. And it's also allowing me then to keep this garage fully insulated uh, because, and that's a big reason why I wanted this insulated door, I've got a mini split head in the corner there where those wires are sticking out of the wall right there where that Freon line is. I'll have a Mitsubishi mini split head on the wall there and in the summertime, I'll set it to probably 80 degrees, so my garage will never be hotter than 80. In the winter, I'll probably set it to 60 degrees, so it'll never get very cold in the garage. My garage fridge and freezer will operate really well because they won't be in the extreme heat that you often have in garages. 
and I can use this space as a workshop or do whatever I need to out here. It's gonna end up being a little bit of my man cave. That's why it'll be really nice out here. But that's really it guys. Hopefully you learned something today. A lot of cool specs. I'll put a link to everything that I talked about today in the description. So if you forgot what size the door was or the brand or any of that kind of stuff or these wire sensors, I'll put a link to all those so you can see that in the description. Guys, if you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content here every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.